Yesterday, two Ahmadi Muslim mosques were attacked in Lahore, leaving nearly 100 dead and many more maimed. In 1974, legislation was passed in Pakistan declaring Ahmadis non-Muslim. In 1984, further legislation was passed outlawing the practice of Islam by Ahmadi Muslims. It is illegal for Ahmadis in Pakistan to pray, to offer salam to somebody else, to call the azan, to wear the kalma or to bear the kalma in a mosque. All of these are illegal in Pakistan for Ahmadis. We cannot preach. And if we are caught doing any one of these things, we can be fined, we can be imprisoned, we can be killed under the Constitution. Flyers, announcements, posters are strewn all across the country announcing that it is meritorious to kill Ahmadis, that Ahmadis are wajib qatar that is that they are worthy of death. How can you rest knowing any of this is happening? Perhaps it is because the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat occupies a very unique place in the Muslim world. Of the 73 sects of Islam, we, the Ahmadiyya Muslims, are alone considered the greatest menace to Islam. We are worse than any other Muslims, worse than Christians, worse than idolaters, and even worse than atheists. As someone once put it, we are the blackest of the black and the ugliest of the ugly. It's no wonder the governments of Saudi Arabia and Pakistan have expelled the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat and declared us outside the Pale of Islam. But let me ask you this, what crimes were committed by Adam? What crimes were committed by Noah? What crimes were committed by Moses? What crimes were committed by Jesus? And above all, what crimes were committed by Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers? Were they not abused, insulted, called heretics, worthy of death? The only crime they committed was calling others peacefully to Allah, declaring that he was one. The only crime they committed was posing as faithful. History shows that without fail, all prophets in their communities are accused of creating disorder, of fragmenting the Ummah, of creating a renegade sect, when in reality the Ummah is already shattered into groups and so many different sects. They disagree on everything, except one thing unites them all, hostility for the Ahmadis. The united front against Ahmadis only brings about a superficial unity. This is not real unity. Believe me, if Jesus had not come, nothing could have united the Jewish factions. It was Jesus' astonishing mission that brought about the superficial unity among the Jews. The Holy Quran declares, Thou thinkest them to be united, but their hearts are divided. Now while I urge all good-hearted Pakistanis to speak out, to enact change and help repeal the laws against Ahmadis that are persecuted in your country. I call your conscience to a higher matter altogether. As our Khalifa once said, and I ask you to ponder this very carefully, bearing in mind the type of persecution our community has had to endure, not being able to offer prayers publicly, not being able to preach publicly, being forbidden to perform Hajj, all of these things. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is the one singular community that can be described as a brotherhood which enjoys the same brotherhood that the Holy Prophet and his followers shared, that they enjoyed. In every period and in every age, we see those who were persecuted emerge as the great sages of their time. They emerge as the beacons of truth of their age. We are Muslims who believe in the Messiah. And I ask you during this time of our persecution to probe further and above all, to pray to Allah for guidance in seeking truth on this matter.